Morning, morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Bread for Soul Convos. It's a new week, brand new week. Um, it's episode 43 that we are doing. And um, the aim of this show, as some of you might know if you've, if you've been watching, the aim of the show is to really teach one another, learn from one another, and by sharing experiences, by sharing knowledge, because no one should not succeed based on lack of information. If you're not succeeding, it should be either you are lacking the talent or you are lacking the drive or any other thing. So um, on today's show, just like any other show, I've got a guest that um, somebody who for me is like a legendary figure in its own way or is getting to the legendary status. But basically I've got Mix For Real um, who's been playing for years and years and years. I remember the first time I saw a mix for real uh, house styles, the CD, the compilation back in 2005. Amazing yes. stuff, right? How are you, Mixer? I'm humbled. I'm sorted. I'm happy um, to be here. And uh, you stated the legendary. Oh, I'm far from that. <laughs> Being legendary, it's, it's, a, it's a huge word, you know, and I don't think I'll, I'll ever get to that level. Um, legendary, that's like... That, that's something big. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Legendary, no. Well, um, the, the, the nice thing about this legendary thing is that you don't get to tell us if you are legendary or not. Ronaldo or Chayla or Emuna, you are a legend. We well, don't worry about it. But if Let's anything, see. you are on the way there. You are on the way there. I've seen on Facebook, even when you know, a DJ has been playing for five years, like, hey, I was with the legendary <laughs> whoever. And I'm like, okay. Do you know the meaning of legendary? <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. It's, uh, it's a story for another day. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think I think you I'm definitely humble. had it there, bro. You know why, Kerealo? Because, like, um, for me, if somebody does it for long enough, you know, like, and through ups and downs and still carries through doing what they love and not only stay in one space because you've managed to also grow yourself from being somebody who's just compiling CDs to selling records to DJing, yes. to teaching, and we're going to unpack a lot of that as we go on the show. Yes. Like, where, where did the passion come from? Like, for DJing, before you even thought about <laughs> DJing, who did you see? <laughs> you know what, bro? Um, um, I stay in Harangua, and um, growing up in Harangua, I... Um, there were DJs around, um, and there were popular DJs around. And one of those DJs that I used to follow a lot um, um, on weekends, whenever he goes play and um, goes out to play, was Nasty Nef. That was in 1994. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, were you in high school? Uh, no, I did my high school in '99. Yeah, I did my house in 99, but at home they knew I love music Um, because uh, my dad and my uncle, they had a record player at home and go Harankua. So um, there were records, the house was full of records um, from your 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 George Benson, um, your CC and BB Winans, um, your like, oh, your, oh, you know, at home there were all types of music. And that's why I fell in love with music, obviously. So going around and checking out posters, Kukasi, and checking out Nasty Nev, and hearing people talking about, hey, Neville, can I have vinyl? And I was like, vinyls? But I have vinyls at home. But unfortunately, there was jazz vinyls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So actually, my, 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 the first person that I saw playing was, was, was him. And he, 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 he did the most. I don't want to lie to you guys. Um, he was just on another level. He was different. Mm. And, yeah. and, and like, have you always had a, a good relationship with, with him? No, I was afraid of him. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I had a friend who was staying not far from him. Then he said, ah, mix you know Rattan music. Let's go and speak to Neville. I'll speak to him so he can be able to teach you how to DJ. And I said, ah, I can't. Then I went to his house and I saw him. Then I ran away. 
because he was so amazing. The, me looking at him was like, wow, this dude, he's playing on SO 1200s, he's got a nice sound, and he's well respected in our community, you know, and he plays good music. And I was very, I was much afraid of him. Mm. So what I did, I had to, because uh, I was attending school, I was in um, at Edu College, so there were record stores around. So I had to go to record stores and get some more info about vinyls. Mm. And um, there was DJ Syndicates where I met Ryan Loder, my, 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 my then partner. Mm. Then I wanted to go to Neville knowing how to play. Sure. I didn't want to go to Mr. Bed and like, okay, fine. Hey, please teach me how to play. Uh, please give me those vinyls. I just wanted to go to him with my own bag of music that I have compiled or that I have bought. Mm. Mm. You and, know? And um, I want to know, like, um, throughout the years then, did he always play a role of a mentor to you, uh, Nasty Nev? Bro, you know, um, he's the, you know, I've met so many people that oh, they wanted to help, but... You know, people have different uh, mindset. People are different. But, um, you know, Neville is amazing. You know, very, very amazing. He took me under his wing. Hmm. He saw my passion because I went to Flipside. That was in 99, I think. Uh, yeah. or was it? Oh, it was 2000, just after my matric. Hold on, hold no. on, hold on. Before you carry <laughs> on, before you carry on, eh, I've just made a call uh, to Neville. Hold on. <laughs> hey, hey, bro, Nev. Sure. Hey, hey. Shapo, then it's yours. Thank you for what you call me, man. Yeah, I see. <laughs> sure, yeah. I love the flow. Yeah, I can only mix in uh, on the show. So, I can only like regarding, uh, you know, you discovering him when Sansa Nelly was and just seeing him, what he has done, relationship here, when I fell in earlier, my boy. Say that, G. That man is a boss. What boss? Mr. Boss, Lucas. Oh, I like boss. Oh, you know, that guy fell in the man. Like, Joe, I know we all love other DJs, but not that the man. No, Eric, Eric, let's hear from him. Eric, you get from Nev. Show Brad Nev. Show us. Yeah. Can I mix that? Yeah, that's my boy. That's my boy. Uh, he's one of the boys that I'm proud of. Uh, we've we've come so 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 much long way, Naledai boy. You know what? Mm. When he was young, uh, <laughs> hey, you know, it's 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 a long story. But uh, look, it's he's one of the boys that I'm so proud of. Mix has done well. And uh, yeah, I remember when he was still young, coming to my house <laughs> after I did the records. You know, like he'll always say, "Like nasty, yo, get to get the mom, 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 get to get get again." Yo, get that stuff. You know what? Yeah. And uh, I'll give him records. I know. So I'm going to store them. Get answer records to the water. Ah, then he'll pick up these records. But amazingly, he'll pick up so you know, like weird records because. When you know, when you when you are the upcoming DJ, you always choose the obvious records. Mm. But he he always chose those you know weird records. And I could I could I could sense or mix you know, a very good year in terms of music, mm. of that. Yeah. And he'll go and play. Tomorrow morning when he comes back and he'll be like happy, you know, like ah, boss, oh, nah, when you play, you know, that don't you know what? Like there's a message. Then yeah, that's why yes. he should be mixed. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to do parties good loving, mm. you know, and I, I used to pull like 5,000 people. I remember first night when he played, you know, I did my party and I called him to come and play. And he was so scared, like, you I can't play. You know, no, you need to play. Mm. No, man, I can't play. What I'm going to play? going to play whatever you play. And, you know, at that time... Uh, finally, uh, Love is a Liar was, was new. I, I, won't re I won't forget that moment. Then he played, when he played Love is a Liar, I saw 5,000 people go crazy. <laughs> you know, they were crazy. And that was Mrs. Moment, you know. And that's that's how 
like an orcasi knew the bone of 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 Bixara, you know. Sure, it sure. was the best moment for him, even for Navier, because you know he was so young. I'm in a tiny young now, tiny, but he he played music of sure. a time. Sure. Yeah, but I, I'm as I'm saying, I'm so proud of him and Fanaga, keep it up, you know. I'm you know I'm, I've always yeah. supported you and go for stand up line, keep it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, um, there's one thing that um, that makes me happy, that made me happy today. Um, I was speaking to Babos. Um, I remember after he, after I'm, I'm going to pick matching, mm. then I'm also, you know, I'm leaving Jackass. I'm going to meet uh, somebody that really inspired me yeah. and Antus. And then you, when I on welcome you, it just took me in. I said, you know what, boy, let's do this. I mean, all your gigs that you had. You were taking me along. They booked you, but you just brought me like come play. And I don't think a lot of people can do that. Mm. I don't think a lot of people, because people they want to promote themselves and so they can be on their heights, but mm. they, they forget about um the other guys that are that want to be uh, part of the lineup. But yeah. you took me in and I saw the fact that you you could help me, not only me, but you helped other people, other DJs. Like you, you had a bigger hand. Like you were just giving away. Like guys, come, let's play, and let's be happy. Sure. And that thing, it's 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 God given, and many you are giving, and yeah. I I appreciate. And for that, I love you so much, and I appreciate it. Today, I am who I am today because of you sorted me out. Mm. Sure. sure. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm grateful. Yeah. I know uh, it means a lot of blame. It's a lot of blame. As I'm saying, Linda, from my side, they, look, I'm I'm proud of you, Blaine. And yeah. remembering where we're coming from, you know, and look, even today, we still won. We had we had our fights, but we still won at the end of the day. One first time. And mm. we still won. And I'm, I'm happy, Blaine, for that. I'm, I'm so much, much happy. And I know you, you, you are one of the best DJs out there. You know, no. we, we, we share everything. Uh, so we share everything. These will play a set and call me and say, Boss, I play a set of an hour. No one even danced. I don't know those people understood me. And I'm, I will always say to him, Look, this is our job. This is what we do. Yeah. We play music over to us. This is our job to introduce music to people. And you did great. Yeah. And after uh, three, four days, and then he come back to me and say, Boss, but what left the problem for me? I don't know. But it's a little bit of a You see, this is how we do it, you know? Because we always play the exclusive. Now in Mixi, we never compromise. I'm telling you, every boy who came to Haramuga, they'll tell you, Hore, we played exclusives. We we always chase for exclusives. Yeah. We never we never go for the commercial songs, you know? And uh, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I, that's what I saw in Mix. Mix, yeah. I bought so many records. Yeah. You know, I had so many records. But when Mix comes to my house and pick up records, he'll pick those okay. weird records. Say, Lomo, not any other DJ will play. Sure. And, and that's that's what it, that's what made him unique. And that's why today he's a unique DJ. Yeah. Because he always plays that unique sound. Mm. You know, he's always chasing for that uniqueness. You know, and mm. that's I think for me DJing that's how we should be. We don't have to play music that people love, but we need to introduce music to people, mm. you know. Mm. People have to get the value for their money, you know. Yeah, and yeah. That's, I know, that's Brandon, how we did because it. I know you, ne? I, I've, I've spent yeah. many times with you. Can I a conversation here for hours? Let's, me and you are going to save this one for, for the show. When I have you on the show, then we are great. But thank you for, sure. for, for, for taking your time for this, Brian. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much That's for having me. So. Thank you. Thank Good you. luck, Mixi. Nah, sure. Thank you for everything, Bona. Whatever you've done for me, Ish, I can't even repay you. But the only thing that I can give you is love. Sure, sure. And then on Chile Mixar, and I love the story of brotherhood between when I last in heaven. But also, yeah. there's something that you mentioned with regards to Pretoria and DJs. You guys have the, some of the most, like, baddest DJs. You know, like, I'm talking, but I want to talk about Pretoria, like, uh, Vinita Vinci, uh, yes. like, uh, Positive K, Nasty Nev is one of those bubbles. Like, who, yeah. what, what do you think created that? Era Kopitoria of creating these like dope DJs. Um, it was a culture, and um, and it was love when we started back in the days. And I realized that um, I know Bubbles 
Babos was a club DJ, fully club DJ. I play lounge, um, hip hop, and soulful house. And uh, Nevele was a DJ and little Bogas. But Babos loved Neville. <laughs> Neville loved Babos. You know what I mean? And because of we were behind getting the best records, the best music. So our aim as DJs at Pretoria was we get to a record store and we don't buy what's what's mainstream. If Ganyan released an album, we're not gonna buy songs that are on Ganyan's album. No, we can have them, but we we'll, we we'll buy something different, unique, because we record stores were importing music. Mm -hmm. So a lot of DJs, um, they will go to stores. I know like vinyl that he had DJ Monde pay the late DJ Monde pay mm -hmm. or a and 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 a, buying a song that um, Iggy Small played the late Iggy Small played. Mm -hmm. So we we were on about okay, um, we have got to kick this coming weekend. We need to go and source for music. We need to go to the record stores and look for weird music so we can able to play weird music so we can be. We wanted to be different, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. So that's the art. Yeah, and and the the it didn't stop with you, you know. Like there, there's been other guys who came through, like yes. Boquet Lacet, Trans Mike Soul yes. as well is one of those guys. Yes. You know, if I could mention just those two, but I mean, there's more yeah. many other DJs. Bokanunu, you know, like Koka Simfeto, like Pretoria, just as as a as a town. What you guys have done for the scene, you know, it's really amazing, and and I think it's also. A reason why back in the day house 22 was called like the mecca of house you know unoka square yes. house 22 fella kopitori you had to be very serious house and oka house 22 then and that was yeah. but what was about your compilations um yeah. on usm records um for real house styles how did you get the first compilation going bro like i said it's brotherhood did you know that um i was hooked up by bubbles Imagine he 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 taught me how to beat mix. Then I left him. I said, you know what, I'm going so I can able to pursue my career. Then Bubbles hooked me up. You know what, you're a great DJ. And that time I was working with Ryan, mm. and um, we just opened for real. Mm. And he hooked up. He just hooked up uh, the guys at US and said, guys, this is mix, and this is Ryan, and I think mix plays good music, and uh, he's, he's a very cool DJ in Pretoria. How about we? Sort him out with a nice compilation because that time Bubbles was was doing his house tunes and he was doing yeah uh, he was releasing his own albums those 45s those those um mid tempos as well mm. and we that's how we got a deal and the reason why we got a deal was because of we we were selling good music to people you know we were selling a lot of good um records to a lot of DJs so we we needed to come out with with, with a compilation and called For Real House Styles. That was the name of the show, For Real House. Mm. And uh, believe you me, uh, that album, it was, it was, a, it was an amazing album. Um, I think I did close to 20,000 sales on that album um, back in the days, hard yeah. copies. Mm. And I remember I went to mix the album. I had 12 tracks. You know when you mix an album back in the days? So we, uh, we used to mix on, on um, 10, 10 tools. Mm. And I've seen a lot of DJs um, when, they, when they were busy doing albums and they would do like five cuts or 10 cuts. You know, you make mistakes here and there. Mm. And like now you can just cut, and, uh, with, with, you know, the, with the technology is easy, but then we used to do it live, yeah. an analog. You know, I, I did one cut. <laughs> I got there. So I, I left. <laughs> I remember a girl looked at me and said, he looked at me and said, bro. <laughs> I did it out of my love and then I left. Even volume two, the same thing. One cut. Mm. Imagine, because that was passion. And the, the music that I put there was, nobody had it. And funny enough, when the album came out, some record labels, big record labels, took some of my songs and put them in their albums. <laughs> because I was, you know what I mean? Because I was, yeah, like sharp, I'm all like sharp. <laughs> but I, I couldn't attend, you know what I mean? That was the weirdest thing ever. And um, yeah, man, it's it, and all the support, obviously, from 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 Brother with their uh, bubbles hooking me up with that album. That album did wonders, and it put us in a map, and it launched the store. 
uh, and then that's what happened next, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we're gonna talk about the store, but before we do, now, you, Bowles, and Nasty Nev, and your partner Ryan, once formed another group. I think it was Motuako, right? Yes. Motuako Underground. But I, yeah. So you understand that, um, you know, I, because of I, I loved Bowles for his sound. I love Nasty Nev for he mentored me. And I had Ryan as a partner at For Real. And I'm surrounded by great people who, who are not posting about life, who are just enjoying getting a record. Mm. You know what I mean? And enjoy making music, lounging music. You know, mm. I remember sometimes we we'll make a song in the studio and it will be like a loungy, loungy, slow song. And, and we'll go crazy like, yo, this is so great. You know what I mean? So... Coming together with those guys um, and um, doing a, one company, and we realized that Chandra Nestinev was was now starting to produce music, and his music was making waves. Mm. And Ryan just opened a studio, and he told me that you know what, Nick, um, I can see we at for real, but I'm gonna leave for real, then I'm gonna start a new company called Motswako. Mm. Um, I'm gonna leave for real because of uh, the sales are not going very well. Our suppliers overseas are crying because of sales are going down because of the digital era is coming. Mm. Then that's when we we, we, we started Motswako. Mm. Then we, we started to make music at Motswako. We've got a big catalog that is unreleased, but I'm sure if it can be released, you will be happy. <laughs> but well. Motswako is quite nice because we, we released Nasnev's first album. And we did, and Taz Mixo was one of us as well. Mm. <laughs> I had Clement as well, and uh, we released Bowles' album. We released my album. Obviously, we were a small label, and we didn't have the contact, the contacts, those heavy contacts. We didn't have PR. We mm. just printed CDs and trying to get them to to to, to music. Yeah. But we didn't have the knowledge in terms of getting our music broad. We knew how to get our music um, on, on Beatport and stuff, but getting our music to all the musical stores, it was a, it was a mission and we mm. needed PR. And that's what we let, you know what I mean? And, and, and but um, for, for, the, for, for the fact that we did it, we, 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 were, we, 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 we were content about it. Sure. Very content. Man, you, yeah. you, you had to be, because like the work that you guys did reached, you know, a lot of people, myself included. And now yes. at that time, 2005, I was in Mafikeng, you know, when you released the first For Real Hostiles. And uh, as, I, as I'm getting into, like, Johannesburg, doing first year, 2006, and then I see, Yo. like, as years go, Mutok Underground pops up. Like, yeah. you guys, for the work that you were doing, and I remember there used to be a book, that book, Nibai Paisa Kodi Record Store, it was actually a free book. Um, BPM Magazine. BPM Magazine. Yes, that yes. magazine had everything. Everything you had to know about house music about was on BPM. Was there new releases, <laughs> new vinyl, new shops, new get everything. <laughs> Man, those were the days. But I know that that was a culture. That was the culture that we had back in the days, and we don't have that now. And or maybe we have it on a digital platform, but that time it was it was a physical book. That had all the information about our DJ in school, our gigs, the new clubs, mm-hmm. um, about Juno, mm-hmm. about importing vinyls. So all the information was just based in one book, mm-hmm. and you could able to advertise yourself as a DJ. Like I am Miss Foria, I'm from Karangua, yeah. I'm a big of DJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was free. The best part is that it was free. You just walk into a record mm-hmm. store, you get the book, my man. Those people who did the, that Mac. It was all about love. You know, You know when you do something out of love, forget about the money. You know, even when I started DJing, money was not the first thing. Um, believe you me, money was not the first thing. I only started to see money later on. You know what I mean? Mm. And because I took DJing as a hobby, mm. you know. So the guys who did the BPA magazine, they had love, they had passion. Mm. Hence, they, they, they focused and, 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 and went all out and gather all the information, phone all the DJs, and those who want to advertise can advertise. Mm. So it was, it, was, it was kind of dope. It was a nice, it was a nice era, actually. Mm. You know? mm. Although well, things have changed now, but uh, it's, a, it's one of those things, yeah. Yeah, and I think, I mean, it's, it's one of those reasons why shows like this, I feel like for the culture, are important, you know. So we kind of like, 
recreate that culture again in the new era? What are we doing to actually promote yeah. what we do and promote our own scene? But I want to ask you about that's something else now. Um, you, so you started the label with, I mean, the record shop with, with Ryan and you guys were selling records. Records were flowing. Then you went on yes. to Motuago with Nasty Nev and, and Bubbles yes. as well. And then that was going. Then, like, yeah. what happened when you stopped selling records and Motuago also stopped happening? Like, what was that era? Like, what happened? If you could um, explain to us. All right. Fast forward to when was it? Um, okay, Ryan. Ryan um, left. Um, um, he sold the business to me. You know that's. You know, uh, there's one thing that I'm very happy and, for, and fortunate. Um, the people that I kept, um, you know, Nasnev, Ryan, and Bowles, even still today, they're still my brothers. So I showed love to them. Then when Ryan was leaving, he left for overseas. And he said, you know what, I'm selling this business because now um, uh, we're, not, we're no longer getting that money, that income that um, we're getting. We used to move about, let's say, 4,000 vinyls a month. Mm. Then now we'll be moving like 890 vinyls a month. And um, the DJs who used to buy um, uh, 40 vinyls were now buying five vinyls. Mm -hmm. um, I remember Kanyani used to buy a stack of vinyls. He would come to my store, then one minute he would buy five records. I said, Oh, but Kanyani, he record to the five. Then Kanyani would say, I mean, you know what? Um, go with some fun, I can, eh? And we're going to the digital world. And right now, when I go to a gig, get some slap. Mm. I'm like, what do you mean not some other slap? No, regard this, you know. Eh? I'm like, no, I'm confused. What do you mean? You're not know, normally using vinyls. I know. Uh, sometimes, but now I'm mm. I'm buying music online, then I'm banging music, mm. and I just use a slapper. Mm. <laughs> and Ryan told me, like, Mix, in the next five years or next few years, things are going to change. We're, we're moving into the digital era. Mm. So, I'm selling this shop to you. It's up to you what you're going to be doing. And that time we have a digital school at the back, but our main source of income was coming from vinyls. Mm. So uh, him leaving, then I'm all alone. It's tough. And um, I'm still getting vinyls, but I can see that it's dropping. Mm. And one minute the shop is closing. And um I'm feeling blue. Um, uh, I feel like I lost. Uh, my shop is closing, and there's one of the biggest record stores in in, in Zanzi. But uh, after a few months, Sokin is also closing. Okay, House of Africa is also closing. So I see. Okay, a lot of shops are now closing. They are being affected by the digital era. Mm. They are no longer buying that vinyl for one fifty or two hundred. They're just downloading a song on Juno mm. for forty bucks or for thirty bucks. And then they, 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 it's easier now. Mm. They just they're no longer carrying vinyls. Yeah. Just let them. Yeah. <laughs> like okay, now the shop is closed, and um, I'm crying. I'm home, and I um, I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm married that time. There's kids there, and my marriage is not going very well. The shop is closed. Um, we're trying to open Motswako Underground with Ryan because Ryan says now what we can do right now since we go into the, jet, the digital era let's make songs mm. because at that time a lot of people were not making songs only a few guys were making songs mm. yeah Taz Big Soul was one of the few guys that I could see that I he's got some songs and some interesting beautiful songs mm. and he was lit he's still lit yeah and Nasty Nev so we got those guys together, then we we released them digitally on on, on platform good platforms, mm. and we printed some vinyls, and then that's how Motswako was was born. Mm. It was nice at Motswako, but um, then Ryan went overseas again. <laughs> <laughs> hey Ryan, uh... no, Ryan, Ryan is my brother. You know Ryan can just change his mind, yeah. and I couldn't continue with that because of that time. I, 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 I'm no longer releasing albums, um, those For Real House Styles albums. Mm. For Real Records is closed. I'm, 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 I'm dying inside. Mm. Mutsaka and Drogan uh, is doing very well, but now he left. And there's some complications there. I'm not releasing any albums, but I'm gigging. Funny enough, 
I'm not releasing the album, but, but I'm gigging, but I want something to fall back on. I want a foundation mm. to fall back. I can't just be a DJ and not work in a store or not doing something. Then things things were kind of tough at the time. Um, mm. And um, your business is down, it's closed. And um, come on, went through a lot. Come on, my marriage is not going well. Like there was just a lot of things going. Yeah. And... But um, what I did, I had to keep my head up. I had to DJ, keep on DJ, keep on DJs. And I remember I was at home and I, 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 I wanted to do something big, but I didn't know what to do. Then I saw an album, yeah, Lulu Cafe, Deep House Chronicles 2, mm. where already there was Deep House Chronicles 1. Yeah. One was done by Malangani, two was done by Lulu Cafe. Yeah. Hmm. I see it on TV, I'm like, okay. They advertise it on SABC one prime time. And it's hook up so king. Mm. Emailing Harrell. Yo, Harrell, this is mix. You remember me from back in the days to USM Records, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. I used to work with Alan Kid Funk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After two days, I got the main bag. I said, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like, bro, I want to read the Boss Chronicles 3. Uh, immediately give me the deal. The flowing year, 2011. Mm. Go on. I released an album. My things were a bit low. Yeah. But I, I, I released my album then and that's when I joined So Kenny. But b- before before we talk about that, I wanna ask you about um just your, your mindset with regards to because during difficult times, bro, like it's it's almost easy to choose to just let go and complain and be like, I things are bad. Kind of like the situation now, like COVID-19 affected everyone, you know, like the lockdown affected everyone, but mostly artists and DJs, because if you are an artist or you are a DJ and the only thing that you do is performance, it's is DJing, that's how you make income. Yeah. During the time like this, it can be very, very yes. difficult, you understand? And and some of us, like I'm fortunate that I'm able to do this show, even though it's not generating income, but I also have like yeah. a a freelance job that I do yes. that helps me like balance, you know, on the side. But I want to yeah. know mentally, ne, how did you deal with things like your record shop closing? Now Ryan is gone yeah. to the UK. Now, like you're not really making as much as you used to do and you still have personal issues. Mentally, how did you handle that situation? Well, you know, um, it was a heavy load. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, and you must understand that um, um, I've always been doing things on my own, um, even though I, I, had, I had guys that I was working with, and I learned a lot of things. And um, the only way that could keep me going was um, was just to find myself, because of, it, was a, it was a lot of, a lot to take in that time, and the shop is closed. I mean, my baby is closed, for real, it's closed, and I'm no longer releasing albums. And 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 um, like I just didn't know what to do. And at at one stage, um, uh, let's say, well, um, there was a time I was going through. Okay, I was going through a divorce at the same time. There was just so many things. You know, I spent like a year of not DJing. I didn't tell anyone. Mm-hmm. I spent a year, a year, mm-hmm. because of um, I just separated with my ex-wife and. And now my main side is, I don't know, it's off. Mm. And that time I, I can't even go to gigs. If I, if I go to gigs, people look at me like, hmm, hmm, I should let him say him. They start speaking and talking and 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 my mindset was not okay. Come on, the shop is closed. It's just so many things. Mm. So what I decided, you know what, I'm going to take a break. And the reason why I took a break um, was just to find myself and so I can able to connect with my creator mm-hmm. so I can know what to do, you know what I mean? And and I know music heals. There's one thing that helped me was music. Mm-hmm. But even though I took a break, I was always on the net buying music on Beatport, listening to mixtapes, but I took a break for a year mm-hmm. just to cleanse and just to come, just to just to focus on myself, okay? Yeah. So I can able to heal and think straight. Mm-hmm. And once I... And then coming out of it, I, I became stronger than stronger than stronger than stronger before, you know, mm. and like mm. than before. Yeah. And and it made me stronger. And a lot of people they were not aware that it, I took a gap year. That's the nice thing about being us, the type of DJ we are. 
whether you with you've got a big record or no big record, you still get bookings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whether you, you spend the whole year not paying, uh, next year no booking. <laughs> so we that was the craziest thing I saw. I, I thought maybe within that year, the following year, I, I'm not gonna get bookings because I'm not relevant anymore. Mm. But pe- people were booking me while I was off. Like, hey, miss, we want you to come play. Go. Botswana, I was like, no, I can't do Botswana. I, I thought you, Malangan's contacts. So I was always redirecting my gigs. Nice. Because nice. I wanted to heal first. I wanted to, to, to I, I, want, I just wanted to pray so I can able to do things the right way. Then I pray for it. Mm. Pray for knowledge. Then I got the knowledge until mm. today. Man, it's so yeah. powerful that yeah. you mentioned that. But I want to say to people um, who are watching this, if you... Um, are going through some sort of mental issues and mental problems, um, especially as an artist. On this show, every first Monday of the month, so the next Monday will be the 6th of July, I have a psychiatrist on the show called Dr. Gwen Donyani. She's at the Live Kastenhof Hospital. And she's basically a therapist. You know, you don't need to be sick, guys. You don't need to be sick. To see a psychiatrist, <laughs> if you think ah, what what are ah, demand or half or we are we are over a psyche. No, sometimes like there are issues that are beyond us that are um, taking over us mentally, and sometimes we don't have the mental strength to pull out to pull ourselves out of those issues. You know, so Kadina was saying we need those people who are trained for such sure. things, and um, so if you if you are one of those people and you need help. Check out those contacts, Dr. Gwen Donyani at the Life Custom Hof in Midrand. And uh, some people, though, uh, who might not go the medical route, might go the spiritual route. And that's fine. If that works for you, that's cool, too. I'm a spiritual person myself. But I know you are also a, a spiritual person. Wow. Yeah, man, I'm a, I'm a fully Jehovah's Witness. And um, I, what I do, I do door-to-door, bro. Like, I go house-to-house. And I preach the word of God. Those are the things that you don't know about me. And funny enough, people know me, bro. Like I, I just knock and I'm like, hey, mix. What is What is this? What is this? I'm telling you, man, that is the weirdest thing. <laughs> I do that even before pandemic, my man. That, that is what I do. And that is, and I enjoy that job. I enjoy doing that because of, you know, it, it gives me closure to, to, to my creator. And my things, they are really, it's already around. And I get wisdom because of, I, I, I teach people about the name of God, teach people about Jesus Christ. And I teach people about the things that are happening today that are written in the Bible. You know what I mean? Mm. So I'm a teacher. I used to be a teacher at Boston. So <laughs> I might yeah. as well teach. <laughs> you might as well teach the Bible, my man. For sure, for sure. I love that. And um, now, when after you released Kosol Kendi, uh, just to get back a bit, after you released yeah. the, the Deep House Chronicles, you also um, came together when I lay Funk Deep Star and DJ Malankani. And, and started doing compilations with Soul Candy. Um, tell us about that brotherhood, Limajitaba. Sure. Yeah, man. I mean, eventually, Some... Lina Latsinga, um, Ostkambo as well, part of the, yes. then you guys became uh, a fourth. But just, yeah, tell you us know, about um, the brotherhood. Yes, you know, um, um, obviously, we, 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 uh, we, we meet, we, I'm, friends, I'm friends with a lot of DJs, and some of my good DJ friends, um, it's Malankani. That's a very, very happy, chill dude. And um, uh, and, and Funk, that would take the blind. So you must understand, uh, Malankani used to work for Deep K, and Deep K, Deep K was owned by Soul Candy. So he was working at the record store. Uh, also, Candy, obviously. Funk Dipsa was releasing nice mixtapes with Les Berenrod, uh, with Deeper Shades. And he got a deal with Soul Candy to release um, an, an album as well. I think he did a Deep, Deep House Chronicles as well. Yes. So we decided to come together to, um, to do like a combo album. And that album was one of the greatest albums to be released at Soul Candy. Because um, I brought my fans into the, uh, the, the compilation as well as Malankan. So we brought all our people mm-hmm. and they bought the album. So it was a nice 
combo because of we were now um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming together as DJs and bringing our sounds together so people can able to to understand what you find. There's three DJs with three different mindsets of music. Mm-hmm. So mix plays this type of music um, and um, funk has its own style. Umalangan is more soulful. So it was a nice... Um, it was a nice deal, actually, and um, I wish we could do that again. I wish we could um, 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 come come together and do something like that. But um, I think in good time we can do it. And they're still my brothers, you know. Um, I still speak to Funk. They still come to my store. Um, the Oscar, they still come and ch- check me out. I mean, I I think I'm one of the like I'm the happy guy. I like uh, I like peace. I'm always with, like all these DJs are my friends, you know, and because I need them in my life because of they always come to me whenever they're going through difficult times because they saw me at my worst. Yeah, they saw me at my worst, at my worst, 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 worst. And I kept my uh, my smile even though I was going through uh, through the most. You know, um, bro, imagine when I was married, um, every time I go to gigs, I'll go with my wife. One minute, I, I'm by myself. You know what I mean? You know that. So they uh, they always ask me, and then they'll know, they'll speculate, they'll they'll know. Hey, son, and that thing used to kill me. Like hey, now they we, we are that couple. You know, she she's an art. She loves singing. I love DJing. Then we go to my kids. She loves my music. Then one minute she's not there. Mm. And um, the fact that they saw everything that I became, uh, I I I came out of that situation stronger, and they saw my. They saw me at that point that I was not happy, and it it, it sort of motivates them. Like yeah. even when they're having their own problems, they come to me. Like, hey, brother, mix it again. Can I stress it So that's why I'm keeping these people, these friends of mine, so I can able to tell them about my past, my stories, so they can able to utilize that in their own lives. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they can able to to be fine as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want us yeah. to talk about your your, your school, because you've got a school that you set up, and I'm I'm very happy that you did, cause like and to see it doing well. And what push I like online. Ah, ne, I want or I push Like you, you always promoting your school. You always promoting your 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 students. You know, like how about now you take a picture? Here's a new student. So first of all, register. Tell us about that. Uh, why did you start the school, and how is it going so far? All right, uh, going back, um, obviously, after coming out of my problems, um, I spent that year, that gap year, and obviously, when you give yourself time to heal and time, um, 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 you're going you're gonna to get wisdom. You know what I mean? You're going to pray for, 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 for strength and wisdom. So, immediately after that, I, I got a call from, from so from, from Saul Candy, funny enough. <laughs> And Koso Kenny was now fusing was um, with with Boston. Yes. Yeah. So they say, you know what? Uh, in Pretoria, um, we have to look for someone who can teach music business, music theory, and DJ. And they only called me. There was no interview. I just got a call. Eh, Mix, like I, um, we'd like you to come to Boston and be a teacher. A teacher, like teacher teaching lecture. Yeah, lecturing. But I don't know how to lecture. That's what I said. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you used to teach people how to DJ. Yes. Yeah, and with that, they, those people that you taught, they're very happy. So come. I went there. I went to Boston, and Boston, they loved me. Because now I'm at Boston, a lot of people are coming to Boston. Now that means it's there. And I can see a lot of people coming to register. Um, they're coming to my class. I had a theory class, bro. Like a theory class where I, I took about uh, licensing. Some more stuff. Um, talk about the, uh, for example, this book. You know what I mean. Mm. I'll talk about this book of mine, how to DJ. You know what I mean. So, what I'll do, I'll just open up a book and um, talk about um, how to play out, how to warm up as a DJ, um, how to read the card. You know. Mm. So I'll teach people about those things, and I'll teach them about. Um, um, how to release your music online, how to play at bigger events, and how to be famous. So those are the things that I was teaching at Boston. And at the same time, um, I've got a mentorship program with the NYD, the Wait, government sector. Hold on, before, because I wanted to ask you about that, but I want to get back to this book, May. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, we were chatting about it uh, just now. This book, yeah. 
there are topics considering how to market yourself online. And yeah. and this book, Kealing, when did you Kealing uh, this book? 2001. <laughs> <laughs> so in 2001, there was a chapter of how to market yourself online as a DJ. Ka 2001. No, that time, we don't have Twitter. We don't have Facebook. We had my the only space. thing that we had was, was my space <laughs> and we made it. <laughs> and, and you've had this book ever since. It's not like Kalona Leo. Yes. You know what I mean? And uh, thank God for this book because it taught me so many things. You know what I mean? It taught me, okay, fine. You want to learn how to DJ? Go to a DJ school. Then I went to a DJ school. Okay, you want to promote yourself? Um, look for somebody that you love and then tell them about whatever you want to do and they'll help you. So this book talks about that. Mm. Um, you want to release music online. All right. There's Juno, the studio at UK. And, and they show you how to register with Juno. Mm. So everything that I learned, I've been utilizing throughout my year. You want to release an album. You need to go to a record label, uh, make a demo CD. If they like your demo CD, they'll release you. Mm. So this book, I love this book, my friend, because this book gave birth to, for real, as a school. Mm. It changed from selling vinyls mm. into an institution. Mm. And this book took me to Boston. You know what I mean? Mm. And Boston was very amazed that I could come and make notes and teach kids about this. Because mm. the reviews that I used to get from the students, they were happy. You know, my class used to be so full, bro. Like, I'll, I'll have about, uh, about 80 people in one room. And I'll be in front. And I'll be, I'll be going. <laughs> and they'll be happy. Yeah. You know, uh, We'll talk about how to become bigger. How, for example, let's let's go to um, how to be famous. Ne? <laughs> uh, I'm going to be famous in mode 276. Don't worry, man. I, sh- I, l- I love teaching. 276 and Ugla Eri. This is very interesting. Okay, 276. <laughs> this is very interesting. How to be famous. They say, for you to generate the fame, you need to make songs. You need to make tracks, 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 and more tracks, and more tracks. The fastest way to get yourself known is to make fantastic songs. Hmm. That would chat. That was 2001, man. <laughs> 2001. And, and can you just imagine for it, by now how much things have changed, but still fundamentally, it's still the same. You know, like if you want to get, get yeah. ahead, you have to create quality. And you have to go be out there, you know. If you're not out there and you're not creating quality, but you wanna be at the same level with this guy, who's or this lady who's creating quality yeah. and they're getting themselves out there, you're gonna be very slow. But me, talking about yeah. your students, ne, um, one of them has actually just commented on Facebook. His name is Lucas uh, Cox Pro yeah. DJ. He says, "I was one of his students in 2008, and I'm proud of you myself." Uh, I'm proud of you, uh, Lepar or Lepar, Aro Lepar. You know, uh, I want to ask you about students, right? The students that are because you've been teaching, bro, like you, since yes. for real to Boston and now to owning your own institution. Yes. How are your students? How would you compare your students from back then and 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 the current students? Um, you know, right now we 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 I I get a lot of students uh, compared to then. Um because of social media and because of um, um, the way I promote the school and the, the, the platform that I get like this, um, I get a lot of people. I get people that just, most most people that I get, they just wanna play. They just, they just, they just want to be seen and play music and get paid. Well, the DJs that I talk back, back in the days, it was more of a passion, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They, 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 they want more information about DJs. They, they, they want that lecture, but Today's DJs, students that I get, most of them, they 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 they're all about you know what. So, hey, Feta, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like, no, don't worry about the money, Feta. The money you, you are gonna get paid, but make sure you we, we get we get it right first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um people are now going into it because of the 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 the, the, the especially female DJs. Um they see Lamise, um, they see 
Muslim clay and then they, they're doing big things and um, and they're thinking fine no, I'm, I'm gonna DJ I'm gonna learn how to DJ and then I'm gonna make money immediately they don't know that it takes time mm. and for you to for, 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 for the world to able to trust you you know you need to promote yourself in the right way that people can able to buy your music and buy into your product mm. um, if you are a new student um, as for you for example what I tell them is this is what you must do. Because once you finish at For Real, I take you to NYDA to mentor you, mm. to do a mentorship program. The mm. mentorship program is how to promote yourself online. I have that. Uh, I, I tell them the same thing that I learned from this book. Mm. Then you need to do mixing. You must create your own podcast. And you must be consistently on the podcast. You must release a mixing. People can able to hear your work mm. and download your work. And you need to make songs. And once you get your contact out there, it might take you a year or two or three, but eventually you win. Life is like that. It's like a seed, right? You know a seed. Mm. When you, you plant it in a rich soil, then when you sit like a you know what I mean? You water it, water it. You know, it comes out nicely in a nice small tree. Mm. But in five years, the tree is huge. In the next 10 years, it gives you fruits. To give you that apple or that pear. Yeah. So your career has to be that way. Mm. Um, if, um, yeah. So that, that is what I teach them. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm giving them an example, kind of nice as well. Like, guys, you know what? Sure. This is what I've done. And I'm only, only now I'm, 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 I'm happy now, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Only now I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it because of I, I work hard throughout. It's been 20 years. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Twenty years. But I want to ask you um, quickly if you can just explain your relationship with the NYDA and what they stand for, because I think like there's other information Ellen Hore many people don't have, especially in our mm. scene, that they could yes. actually use uh, platforms like the NYDA. What is it that you do with them? And then Bonne, Spanish le Bonne, and like. All right. Initially, I was mentored by the NYDA. So I was one of those guys that um, um, wanted information about anything, um, especially music-wise. Um, um, going back, um, I'll answer the question. Going back, I was one of the first people in the country to do the Red Bull Music Academy. You know, I did that, bro. In 2001. <laughs> 2001, I did the Red Bull music. I used to tour with Craig Massive. Mm. So I used to get a lot of information. I used to do, I used to receive good lectures from them. Mm. So with the NYDA, I saw that the NYDA, what they do, they, they've they seen that a lot of people are suffering in terms of having their own businesses. So what I do with them, I, I take my students and some of the people that are not even my students, and I bring them together and I take them to NYDA, where I have a class at the NYD where I give them a session mm. about the music business, you know, about if you want to go into business, what must you do? Mm. And I teach them that, okay, fine. Now you're going into music business. You need to open up um, your own business. You need to open a business account. You need to, um, you need to um, register your business. You need to do a profile about your business. Then once that is done, then the NYD, what the NYD, NYD does, they take them and then they also give them a certificate and they, 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 they um, what is it? They, they fund them. Mm. They give them funding. Mm. They give them funding then for like 50,000. Mm. Imagine. So meaning after getting all that info at the NYDA, you apply for funding. Mm. So that's what I'm helping them. Mm. And once you apply for funding and then they can see that, okay, fine, you're legit. You've got your equipments ready. I mean, you've got your your, your, your certificates ready. You've got your tax clearance ready. Then they, they buy equipment. Yeah. You know, yeah. for free, okay, which is and it's for free, just like that. Yeah. It's a mentorship program that yeah. um, helps um, those who are less fortunate. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that is what I do with that. And then I'm connecting it with For Real because uh, I have a lot of students that are actually um less fortunate you know mm. some students don't know don't even have money to pay for my course but i'll take you mm. and i'll take you then i'll teach you then i say you know what i wonder things are hard um i think it's important for you to go to nyda then they do the mentorship program mm. and they open their own businesses and they get equipment and they come crying to me and they, you know, <laughs> they cry they cry i'm like oh why are you crying 
no one to see the Joe Panzami like equipment in Yana. So can only basically top when Yana the CJs now can go to weddings and play. Mm. So that is what I've been doing. This is what I've been doing, mm. um, and throughout, um, just um, after leaving Boston because, mm. um, immediately after leaving Boston, I I focus on N- with NYD and for real, but so far everything is coming together. You know what I mean? Bruh, I love this so much, and uh, thank you for, for sharing as well. You know, I think, yeah. uh, People like you who are doing what they do, bro, like it's it's important. But you also did a, a music workshop last year with For Real. Yeah. How did that go? Um, are workshops still um, an important thing? I mean, I know, for example, SAMC from 2008 yes. um, has been yes. for, for me. Like it, it helped me a lot, you know. Um, and is, is, it yeah. still, is it still important and necessary to host music workshops? Um, I did one last year. Um, the only problem is that we didn't get funding. Um, we applied, but we never got funding. Mm-hmm. But um, even if you don't get funding, you just need to dig deep in your pockets. But the the, the, the expo is very nice. Um, I've been doing it almost every year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the first one that I did was in 2014. Uh, no, no, 2012. 2012, that's the first episode I, episode I did. Um, I like teaching, um, 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 I like to share information. Um, if I have to choose between DJ and teaching, I'll teach, uh, I'll choose teaching. Uh, yeah. Mm. Um, I'm teaching people how to DJ and how to get into the industry and how to do things right. You know what I mean? Mm. That is my passion. My passion is just teaching. So the, the expo was quite nice. I had, I had Ralph Gum. I had, you know, so I had sculptured music while he was great. Um, so I had a lot of good DJs who came, uh, were part of the panel. I had people coming in. I had China. Like I had everybody. Mm-hmm. They just came into the expo and enjoyed the setup during the day. And, and the evening was was just a, was just a party. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I liked about the expo um, during the day, I, I invited NYDA. I invited the arts and culture. Mm-hmm. I invited um, all the the people who fund, so they can able to see what we do. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and I invited Samro. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And they all came and they gave good lectures. Mm. Um, and that is what I love doing. So I've realized that for the past 20 years, actually 70% of the 20 years that I spent, that I've been um, um, being a DJ, I've been teaching, actually. <laughs> yeah. I just realized that, that, you know, I've been teaching. You may see me as a DJ, um, play, mixing, like, but actually my... My passion is teaching. My yeah. passion is um, getting 40 people and me sitting and speaking to those 40 people and, you know, comforting them. That, you know, mm. this industry is not easy. Mm. It's difficult, but if you really want it, if you're passionate about it, and this is what you have to do, follow the protocol, follow the follow the guidelines yeah. that I give you, and then in time, you make it. Yeah, You know, in time, mm. you make it. I mean... The God loves us all, but whatever you, any energy you put into your work, whether it's production or your skill, eventually you get the rewards. That's how life is. Mm, mm, yeah. Definitely. And Brian, um, yeah. just before we close, um, I want to ask you about one of your students because I always say that it's very important to see, well, for me, I find it important when I see people from my scene, the underground, deep house scene especially, I, yes. I, I, I love seeing people like this appear on platforms, on big platforms that we don't casually see a deep house person on. And you were on yes. Bonang's show because of your student, uh, a Pinky Gate, right? I just want to ask <laughs> you. <laughs> and you know what I like about that is that she actually plays Soulful House. I'm like, yes, this is what we need. You know what I mean? Just tell me about like the energy. Where is she still a student for you? <laughs> Yeah, well, she's still, she has to graduate. Um, we can't graduate because of this pandemic, obviously. Uh, we're just going to have, uh, we have to offer a certification of um, complications, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, for her to complete. Yeah. So what happened with Pinky? Pinky was a, was a fan of mine. She, she loves my music. She's always been a fan of mine from back in the days, you know, and, uh, and <laughs> then she came to my school and when she came to my school, she, she knows my hustle. She knows where I come from and she knows uh, like she, she's some that, somebody that knows me very well mm-hmm. and the fact that she came to the school and she saw that okay fine this guy comes from Boston 
And now he's just opened a small studio in Yana where people come in. And she saw that, no, a lot of people come in and, and we can come and chill and listen to music and speak um, about our problems or be happy and be free. And then as I was teaching, I said, you know what, I want, I want to bring my people, my crew here and to see what to see what I do, what I love. So I want to learn how to play so you can able to assist me. And then one minute I'm there and I see 100 cameras coming to for real. I see that drone flying up. <laughs> then I just see her coming with people. Like, hey, this is serious. Yeah. And I don't want to lie to you. And even that time I was getting students. I was getting enough students. Mm. But after that episode, I think I got I got hundred students. Nice, <laughs> nice. Women. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <word. Yeah. laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, after that episode, you know, I just you know, I, I, just like God works in mysterious ways, and um, um, God loves your hustle. Whatever you are doing, what you've been doing for so long, at the end of the day, you're gonna be blessed. Mm. At the end of the day, you're gonna get something. You're gonna get the rewards. Mm. That's how life is. Mm. You know, I got the rewards, and she came. Mm. You know, that time we had about 60 students. Yeah. I wish I'm happy having 60 students yeah. at NYDA and that's for real. Eh, my things are going. Yeah. Eh, one minute after, after the TV show, more than 100 students. <laughs> Yeah, nice one. I, I love that. Bro. I love that so much. And also, no, just in closing, uh, two things that I want to talk about. Because you, um, you know, I've seen, you've always been selling stuff like equipment. Yes. But all, I've seen you doing it a lot ever since lockdown because the sl- school has been closed. But a lot of DJs yes. needed like equipment now. DJs are realizing, hey, how can I equipment now? I need to find something. I need to do a live, you know. And and you've been yes. selling th- that equipment and that's going so well. So, guys, if you want equipment, DJ and sound equipment, you know, mix is your guy. Gonna send Bruh, you, yeah, I've yeah. Been selling DJ equipment since 2001. I have got an account with everyone in your country and overseas. Um, I just pioneer with pro audio or audio show. Like, I've been fortunate because Ryan was co- was connected. So, when he left me with Furio, I still had those contacts. So, mm. What are you looking for, Esso, for pioneers? Uh, you are the guy. Yeah. You are the guy. <laughs> but also, also, you've been selling um, merchandise, you know, like, um, just yeah, like me, I sell this uh, Bread for Soul merchandise. You yeah. sell your for real stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. You know, if you, and yeah. I see, I mean, a lot of people, it's dope to see a lot of guys um, selling sweaters now and stuff. I mean, let's sell, guys. Like, even if you see people selling sweaters, get in there, Sell what you need to sell. If you have your own following, they will support you. Sure. And uh, these yeah, are the, the for real sweaters. I, I, I've just posted a picture there. People to yeah. check on online. Uh, dope, yes. dope sweaters. I can get them for yeah. weeks. This pandemic, my friend. This yeah. pandemic has... We had to work with the time. We have to move with the time. So, mm. pandemic, we're not getting gigs. But we don't... I mean, we're not gigging, my yeah. friend. I yeah. mean, the whole year, all our gigs are cancelled. Yeah. I can't even... I can only see you via Zoom now. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't even meet up with you anymore at yeah. gigs, you know what I mean? And we miss that. But for us to keep on moving, let's sell small things so we can able to eat, you yeah. know what I mean? So we can yeah. able to survive. Yeah. 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 This pandemic now is killed. No, yeah. it's a lesson we have to learn from this pandemic. So if it happens again, mm. we must be we are fully... Ready. We are ready. Yeah. We are ready. But one of the things that you sell as well is Rizla. My man, are you still selling yeah. Rizla rolling paper? Let me be honest with you, then. Yeah. Um, I it was supposed to be come out the Rizla, you know, but the reason why it did not come out is because I was now connecting with the government. You know, uh, yeah, I'm connecting with the NYDA yeah. and the us, and I'm teaching up and coming kids, mm. and I'm uh, yeah, I'm mentoring. So I realized, you know what? If I release this. And releasing a Rizla will give me so much money. I know for a fact because of I just get a barcode, make sure, go overseas, make sure that the paper is set. Then I speak to the right people, then you will find it at the garage, anywhere in the country, and I make lots of money. But I have to think about the fact that I'm spiritually now, I'm, 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 I'm teaching people the Bible, I'm teaching people about music, and I'm, I'm inspiring young kids. But let me do it the right way. You know what I mean? I can be gangster, but I think. It's a drug at the end of the day. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So to think, 
I had to sit down and think. I, like, oh, I, I knew that releasing a Rick's Rizzler would give me lots of money. Mm. Just a nice deal. I know for a fact. But I had to choose. Mm. Like, oh, fine, I've, I've chosen to, to, to do that. Not that it's a bad thing, but I, I'd say, you know what, let me, let me be a good example to people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And um, even when you look for funding, when they Google you, they find Rizzler. Ah, but that's so oh, Rick said it's all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> But Rick said he's old. Yeah, they go out, but and and I appreciate that so much. But um, yeah, uh, I wanted to ask you just in closing, mix. Ne? Is there anything? Yes. What What are some of the mistakes that you have done that you learned from as a person? Well, in terms of music wise, um, well. I don't know, bro. Like, I can't recall. It's only on personal basis, you know what I mean. But um, music, um, I've always been learning. You know, even if um, you learn, you fail. You learn, you fail. And I, I, um, because of I've been, I've, I've been um, learning from this book as well. So I knew that one day I'll fail. But if I fail, I have to still come up. You know, um, the only difficult time that I encounter is. Um, it's, 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 it's when I lost my, my marriage. That's the one thing that really actually um, triggered me. Um, I don't anything, uh, music, even if I fall um, in music, I still get up because I'm passionate, you yeah. know, and there's always ideas, yeah. you know, and yeah, yeah um, you may think, people, I know people make a lot of mistakes, obviously, but um, we learn from it. But if you're passionate, even if you make a mistake, it's nothing like, okay, fine. Uh, I'll do it better. Mm. You know what I mean? Don't take it personal uh, mm. because of we are imperfect. That's how God created us to be imperfect. Mm. So the only dent that I have, that I had then, <laughs> it was the, that, uh, that uh, the marriage part of it. Yeah. And it taught me a lot of things that um, you must not take things for granted as well. And then you just need to focus and, and have a lot of respect for that, that platform as well. Mm. So yeah, so that's that's that's, that's what I, I uh, it comes from my personal basis basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, nah, my man. Yeah. Now nah, I'm I'm glad that you're sharing this, and also that, yeah. I mean, like you say, all of us do mis- make mistakes. You know, like nobody has yes. a perfect life, and and it's important that when you find yourself as a person, just in general, to whoever is watching, if you find yeah. yourself. Um, uh, making mis- a mistake and and you're not happy about it and you're kind of going through a bad time about it realize it for yes. what it is it is a mistake and then do yes. better next time you know then find your feet again but don't dwell into yes. into a mistake that you know mm-hmm. like 10 years 20 years yes. down the line you're still suffering no. from the same mistake that you did that's not life yeah yeah don't be trapped it's by like, your mistakes it's, yeah yeah it's a learning process then i told myself that you know what I'm going to come out great. I'm going to do all the things that I love doing, which is teaching as well, and which is DJing, which is mentoring kids, and also riding my skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so... It, it I didn't know well. that, that, you, you, that you skate, eh? Right. So yesterday it was World Skating Board day yesterday, so you know, I was skating the whole day. Nice <laughs> uh, one, nice one. Okay, all nice. people are watching skating in my wood. I'm like, This is skating, <laughs> like, I'm not going to be All right, listen, now, now we know what you do for fun, bro. But, uh, anyway, anyway, bro, I just want to say thank you so much for, for spending your time, you know, and, and sharing your knowledge and experiences. I really appreciate this, bro. To be honest, I'm humbled that you invited me and, and that I shared all my deep underground stories um, with, with everybody. Then whatever I, I, I told you today, whatever I shared with you, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's I hope it can, it can help the next person that um, even though we go down, we need to come up. But the thing, they need to come up, you know what I mean? And... My mentality was very sharp because even if I, uh, my DJing careers, I, I, things didn't go the way. It was not a flop for me because I knew I could do better because I, I needed to consult what? The book. Mm. I needed to consult Nasty I needed to consult uh, Bubbles. I needed to consult the people who've been doing it for years so they can say, no, when, when this happens, when you go to a gig and you play and people don't dance, mm. uh, it means you're doing something interesting and good. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So that is uh, that is what I have learned. So luckily, I had brothers who always back me up, and um, and I have guys like you who always there for me. You know what I mean? Always there for me, and um, I'm just asking what it's going to be more out place. You know, and because you're doing great things. I mean, this is a good, a great platform for everyone, and and the fact that you came up with this and you're doing you're doing this that makes me happy, and it shows already your your modern DJ. Yeah, you're not just a DJ fella, and you make good music. Come on, you make good music. Come on, you. Or can I tell you Zoom? Give a roto, give a roto. No, my man, thank you. Thank you so much, Mixara. All the best with you and your school, my man. Like, I, I I'm so... going to school now. Yeah, I'm I, going. Yeah, we are spanning, we are spanning. Yeah. But actually, I, I really wish that in the future, we're going to see yeah. for real, we're going to see for real in Durban, we're gonna see for real yes. everywhere, you know, so that it can yes. really grow into what it should be yes. for we sure. Tap into that, but uh, I didn't want to speak about it because yes. I, I there's one thing that I learned. Um, that there's those plans that you have um, that you want to do, you must always keep them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Then yeah, they might just see the hey, there's yeah. another branch of you. It, you know what I mean. Yeah. Sometimes when you speak, the devil is listening. Mm. <laughs> It don't happen. Uh, this time, I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. If he's there watching, <laughs> we are telling him, Omar, come on, go check it. Ronaldo, nah, so Ronaldo, Jehovah's Witness, he is our brother. No, bro, I got thank you, thank you. Er, tabu, er, you to hello, yes, pani, and then I need to do my own things there. But yes, uh, thank you so much, brother. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, to everyone who's watching this. Uh, Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Please share the video. Please tag other people in the comments uh, who might learn from it, who might um, find it interesting. And let's remember to stay creative. Peace out.